So this is Plague Evolved. I actually picked it up during the Steam summer sale, and I'm going to let this intro video play because I think it's really, really cool. Commencing autopsy three. <laughs> Time, 2104. 27-year-old female infected with unknown pathogen. Blood analysis indicates... Virus. Provisional name is Pax-12. Deceased had traveled in China before returning home two weeks ago. That must have been pre-quarantine. Unknown if had contact with livestock, but I can definitely see evidence of insect bites. Deceased had reported coughing and sneezing with a high fever. I'm seeing a nasty rash, some abscesses around the abdominal cavity. Clear signs of immune suppression. Cause of death appears to be catastrophic organ failure. Findings match. Reports coming out of China. This is highly concerning. The deceased may still be infectious. So that was the intro, and this is a very, very good strategy game, in my opinion. I, I picked it up, like I said, during the Steam Summer Sale, and it was like under 10 bucks. I think at that price point, it's a great, great game. So you start out as bacteria, and then you unlock each one of these diseases as it goes on. Now, each one of them had their own pros and cons, uh, such as some of them can, you know, do better in certain areas and, and so on. So I'm going to start out as virus and kind of show you some tips and tricks that I use. Um, to do that now as you Complete and you know kind of go and beat some scores in your game and things like that you unlock these modifiers That you can use uh, I'm just gonna play on normal and we'll just call this the Zika virus <laughs> and What we're gonna do is we're gonna start in Greenland and the reason why is because I found that I was able to infect the entire world except for Greenland and Iceland a lot of times or I was getting stuck and I wouldn't be able to basically get those last two because they will shut these countries start shutting down their airports and seaports and land borders and all that kind of stuff and then you're kind of screwed uh, because birds mosquitoes and all that kind of stuff can't get all the way to Greenland and things like that so you are I mean literally screwed um, so this these are random events that come in this is kind of a bad one so if I wanted to get my disease through the air um, air filters I have to upgrade that uh, so I'll go over this real quick. This is the evolution here history. It'll show you the symptoms that evolve. Transmission, I'm going to go ahead and do the water one because we are in Greenland and we are going to pass this disease via the seaports. Now I don't usually do these right away, uh, these you know animals and mosquitoes. And the reason why is because it increases the chance of mutation. Now that sounds great on the surface because you don't have to spend DNA points and you get a bunch of these you know, symptoms such as the, you know, the coughing, but a lot of times like this one here is actually lethal. And the strategy to this game is to fly underneath the radar, infect everybody, and then start having the nasty symptoms of like, you know, the death and, and lethality of it. Now the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to do the waterways and I'll go ahead and actually do I don't quite have enough. This is the one it was talking about. The airplanes have new filters. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade it. Then I wanna do this one. Uh, this is actually kind of a twofold reason why. One is because once you get into more of the wealthier countries, I know like Canada, Great Britain, America, I can't remember the exact list from this game that they consider the wealthier, but they have more medicine that is able to fight a lot of these diseases up front. Now you can get past that, you do that, but this opens up a research thing that allows you to decrease future research speed. And that's part of the reason how you're going to get the top score in this game and kind of get you know the maximum amount of uh, points. Now coughing is actually benign. That's actually fine. That's it actually increases infectivity. So that's fine. Now another cool thing is I can click on individual countries and I can go ahead and see you know the infection rate. And then I can go down here and see it the entire world. Now we've already infected parts of Europe because of our waterway, which is awesome. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the air one. And then I'm gonna save up for the water too because unfortunately in this game they had the new plane filters. So the upgrade lets us uh, you know, spread between countries again, which is great. Now down here, this is actually, the blue bar represents the amount of healthy people left that have not been infected. 
The red bar, which you can barely see right there, is the number of infected people in the world. And then eventually the black bar will be the number of deaths. And you can actually kill people faster than you are spreading the disease. So there's a lot of strategy to this game. So we're going to go ahead and do water too. That way uh, we can really spread this through the ocean and into Iceland, into Madagascar, a lot of these island cities. Because those are actually quite hard. Now that we've done these two, which I think are the hardest, there's still a few other ones we have to worry about. So we've really done a good job infecting Europe right now. So at this point, um, I'm not going to worry about the symptoms just yet. I am going to do this level one. Like I said, so the beaker decreases future research speed, makes it very, very difficult for these scientists once they do start researching a cure. Makes it very, very difficult for them to actually come up with that. And once again, the, the, the least amount of research speed and the fastest as far as number of days that you can cure the disease, the better your chances are. Now anemia, I happen to know from playing this game, is actually a fatal disease. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to symptoms and we're going to go here to anemia and we're going to devolve that disease. That means we're going to get rid of that symptom. That way we don't have to worry about it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a lot of these that increase infectivity. And then the next thing I'm going to do is these three right here. I'm going to do bird, rat, and mosquito. And the reason why is we're infecting, you know, a few countries, but we can really speed up the process with these animals. Now, people that said minor disease is spreading, so there's kind of a little bit of awareness now starting to happen. Still no deaths, though. We don't want to... I personally don't like to do a lot of the deaths until you reach about right here. So about halfway, anywhere from 50 to 75% of the population is uh, infected with the disease. Uh, I'm going to do the mis let's see. yeah, I'm going to do the mosquito first and then I'm going to do the bird. The reason why I like to do those is as I said before the birds and mosquitoes don't really care about the land borders. And then birds can sometimes reach some of these closer islands, although Madagascar can start to be a little different. Now that DNA strand, that's just points that you get to use your disease. So as you start infecting more people, they give you like the little DNA points. And then the biohazard sign is actually you have infected a new country. So let's go ahead and do bird. And I don't want that one. Let's go ahead and do sneezing. Let's go ahead and get that infection rate a little higher. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do decrease the research speed. I might even do the second one. And I wanna get ahead of that because you wanna start it before people start infecting it. So it's developed sweating, that, that's actually fine. Uh, let's go ahead and do the second one, get that out of the way. And at this point, I'm gonna start doing, you know, once again, the infectivity, because we haven't gotten much of South America. And we still need to get some of these island cities, as I said, there or island countries, because they're very, very difficult to sometimes penetrate there, okay. Especially if they start closing their borders. And that's another thing. You whenever you start scaring these countries and they're like, oh my gosh, there's a disease, and it is really, really bad, and they start, you know, closing <laughs> their borders, and then you're kind of like screwed, so. Uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this one at paranoia makes un makes makes them unlikely to seek treatment so that way when they do start doing the cure it really doesn't matter and then I'm gonna go ahead and do rat and then after rat so Germany has just shut down their seaport so even though we are still what I consider benign this is you know nobody's died from the disease it just kind of has some nasty symptoms. Like I said, this is what starts getting difficult is when these countries start doing it. So they will shut their ports down much, much faster if death is involved. So we have about 50 points. We've only done about a third of the world. I'm gonna go ahead and do the needle. And some of these are kind of better too because they actually allow the research speed to be slow. So significantly harder to cure. I like to do those ones as well. Um, I actually don't want any, I still don't want any lethality though. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do, 
I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna do the animal. So there we got an island. We just got a few more left. Uh, like I said, at this point, since we still have some of the ones that I consider kind of difficult to spread, we're gonna go ahead and not do any <laughs> of the kind of nastier disease part of this. So, um, let's see. I'm going to do that one, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this as well. Which is, the, it'll just allow us to extremely go through the air in the sea. <laughs> Alright, so at that point, I think... Now we can start adding deaths, um, and it looked like we were able to do that without DNA points. That's actually fine. Uh, the only place left is Madagascar. And we should be able to get them here in just a few seconds. Uh, we have 82 points. Let's go ahead and do, I like to do bird two just in case. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Dead bodies actually remain a place to infect people, so just in case. And I'm going to go ahead and do these two. It increases the chance of mutation without me doing anything at all. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this warm climate because Madagascar is the last one to need to be infected. And there we go. Now at this point, I can kind of sit back. I've got a lot of the people infected, but I don't want to. I still don't want to kill them too fast. Let me see what the research speed is. Let's go ahead and decrease the research. And then I'm even going to do number three there. So we're at 21, and that knocked it all the way down to 16. So this is the bad part. This is why you don't want to start doing that earlier. So now the whole entire world has been focusing on a, a cure. And it can go very, very, very quickly <laughs> if you don't watch that. So. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do the last bit of that one to mutate. And then I'm going to work on the symptoms with all my remaining points. Total organ failure can be a bad one because you can start killing people so fast. Like I said, you're not going to be able to infect them fast enough. But at this point, I think we're going to be able to do just fine. And it'll tell you the last healthy person has been infected with the disease. So no healthy people left. So that's what we want to see. Uh, with these last few ones, uh, we want to go ahead and we want to make this disease just as rapid as possible. We want to kill them as fast as we can now. Honestly, I think we actually have, okay, there's just two there. I was gonna say, we have just about every disease <laughs> or every symptom we can possibly have. So now at this point, it should come up with a message. Last few people on earth are just basically waiting to die. Yeah, they're just watching. They know the end is coming. So. Unfortunately, by the time they fully sequenced our disease, there's only like five people left in the world. Uh, and that is how you beat this game. This is kind of cool. So as I was saying, uh, the, to beat your total score, you want to have the least amount of days. And I actually, to be honest, I think this was my best game so far. <laughs> I was usually in the 600s, but now I'm, I just was able to do 536. Uh, and the least amount of cure progress. I think my best game ever was like 31% on the research. So it's kind of a balancing game. You want to hurry up and infect everybody with these like really, you know, you don't want too many symptoms, but then you want to be able to infect everybody. So it's a very, very big balancing act. And uh, I think this game is really, really fun. Like I said, below the $10 point, I think it was a really, really fun game. And uh, 